Guys, you asked for it, so I made it happen. Here we got a brand new Fluke 107 multimeter. We're going to compare it to my Astro AI. Coming up next, right here on Better Biomed. As I said in my last video, I was looking for a small portable multimeter and someone reached out and said that I should check out the Fluke 107, to which I have never seen this guy before. So I said, why not? Let's go ahead and buy it and let's check it out. So here you can see, uh, this is my 289 meter and it is kind of large. We will use that as a contrast. Here is the box for the 107. Here is the original box for the Astro AI. If you guys remember, I said that it came in a nice little hard case or semi hard case. The 107 meter has a box, a rather fat manual, but fluke manuals almost never tell you how to use the device. Yep, it's all mainly garbage. And you have a fluke meter. Look how small this guy is. You see that? How crazy is that? It does fit in the palm of my hand and it's got a really goofy magnetic strap that attaches to it. Let's see, we've got a set of leads. Fluke brand leads are usually really good. Um, these ones are the polyvinyl uh, feel. I like the ones that are silicone jacketed, but these ones, these ones are all right. So the Fluke 107 meter, it costs around $100, $120. And uh, the Astro AI over here, this guy, if I remember right, it cost me $44. So it's basically half the cost of the Fluke. The screen is obviously a huge difference between the two meters. Let's go ahead and turn it on so you guys can see what they look like. And this guy here turns on up here. Now the Astro AI, not only did it come with a set of leads, but it also came with the thermocouple probe, a user manual, which actually is a pretty reasonable user manual. And it's got a lot of extra functionality in this guy that I don't believe the Fluke has. We're gonna go through it step by step. Now one of the major differences is that the jacks for the Astro AI are on the bottom. Some might like it, some might not like it. I wish they were accessible through the, the outside of the case because if they were, then I could just plug into the outside of the case and I wouldn't have to pull the meter out every time. And uh, the Fluke, uh, it comes with a stand and I guess, I guess that's how you use it. Now, I do really like Flukes having the magnetic uh, holder because when I'm working on refrigerators and stuff, I get the magnet and you slap it on the refrigerator and the meter's dangling like that. So I really do like the magnet, but this is the first time I've seen them use it as a stand. But you can see if you don't have it set correctly, it wants to tip forward. I guess it's somewhat stable. The Fluke probes have isolation covers on them. All right, let's go ahead and put this meter on ohms and we'll check the leads. Okay, on ohms, I have 0.1 of an ohm, which basically is nothing. Now notice the difference here is this meter with the giant screen immediately goes to continuity mode when it's on smart mode. So as soon as it senses a short, okay, there's a little bit of a delay. So there's a little bit of a delay. Let's go ahead and set it on manual function. And test that delay. So the responsiveness 
It's not quite there. You see, you see that, guys? Let's go ahead and test the fluke. The responsiveness for continuity is one of the main differences between multimeters. I'm going to go ahead and lay this guy down so that you, see, you guys can see what it's doing. Okay, so there we go. Okay, notice this. On the Fluke 107, there's also some delay. Okay, so let's check out my 289 meter, and I will show you what a good meter looks like. You see I've got my magnetic clip on the 289. Now responsiveness in continuity mode is everything for me, because I like having a really fast connect and disconnect message. Okay. See that? I, I can't... So that is a huge difference between the 289 meter and these cheaper meters is it's faster and it uh, tells you immediately as soon as it, it notices that there's uh, a short. These guys here have a little bit of a delay which just means when you're troubleshooting you're going to slow down your troubleshooting and make sure that you got a good connection. It's still a solid built little meter though, I really dig it. Okay, so this guy here, let's put it on uh, auto mode. Alright, so this one's on smart mode, which it defaults to when you boot it up. You can see the flashy lights right here showing you where the probe should be connected. Now, one of the big differences here is that there is a 10 amp fused connector, which we're used to, but it doesn't have a milliamp connector. So what I'm wondering is what is the resolution for amperage on this guy? And I show 0 .000 of an amp. So it has some resolution. Hmm. I wish I had something better to, to check that with. All right, let's check 12 volt. Now one of the things I do like is uh, on the Astro AI, it's a dark background with white lit numerics, whereas this guy over here is the exact opposite on the fluke. It's a light background with dark numerics. It's, I don't know, it's a preference thing. I think that the light numerics are easier to read. I just noticed that the Astro AI does not have, it doesn't have a kickstand so, so that you can uh, read it very well. Hmm. Well, the kickstand does matter. I mean, it, it that is a plus for the uh, fluke here. Plus, uh, the fluke on the back cover, there is a little flat blade that you do a quarter turn and then you can get to your two AAA batteries. That will be really nice because this one here, I have a Phillips screw that I have to take out and I have to take it out of the boot. Whereas the fluke is just designed to be a tough meter. You know, it's a really good meter anyway. So let's see, voltage DC, bam. Okay, about a half a second delay, I think. Three quarters of a second delay for the voltage reading. Let's try on this guy over here. All right, I would say that the Astro AI is a wee bit quicker. Yeah, it's it's pretty quick versus the Fluke, which, I don't know, maybe they're about the same. So you can see one, I'm reading 12.41, took it a second to get there. Let's try this one. 12.40 and it's right there. So there's a little bit of meter creep on the fluke. 
because as soon as you land it, then it starts doing the calculations. And it's dropping down, dropping down until it gets to the voltage. And when it comes to the Astro, it just click, click, and it's there. So there's not as much meter creep going on there. So on the Fluke, we have volts for AC, we have volts DC, we have millivolts for AC. Then we've got ohms, diode mode, and continuity, which is selectable with the yellow button. We have capacitance measurement mode, and we have amperage mode with a backlight button. We have a hertz and percentage button. So we could actually put it on hertz and figure out uh, our line frequency or motor frequency. But it's not that complex of a meter. Uh, I would say that there are more functionalities built into this guy. I mean, it does have the, the flashlight. It does have, uh, it's got ranging, which uh, this guy has auto ranging. This one has min max. Now min max is such a nice thing. Um, I really do appreciate min max. But guys, take a look at these two displays. I mean, if you were looking at these meters, I mean, this this has got such a nice bright display. I really dig it. This one definitely boots up quickly. Definitely boots up quickly. Yeah, if I remember right, Let's give it a couple seconds and I'll see how long it takes to boot up. Ready, set, go. Okay, just a couple seconds. And then it goes right into smart mode, which is very cool. If somebody doesn't know what they're looking for, you know, they start doing measurements. That's kind of cool because I really use continuity mode a lot with my meter. I dig that it goes right into it. The Fluke is cut and dried. It's a Fluke, man. Um, it's built like a tank. It's got some interesting features with the magnetic stand. I don't know if I dig that. But uh, the display at least is reasonably large, I guess. I mean, considering how small the meter is. Look how small that meter is. Now, when it comes to multimeters... The Fluke 107, it's still got that Fluke industrial standard. It's going to be a reliable meter. It doesn't have all the feature sets of the Astro AI. Like I said, I dig the hard case for the Astro AI. Both of them have really good leads. Although, I don't know, these uh, the Astro AI has got a wee bit more of a strain relief right here on the leads. It's I really like that transition, so it's not just a abrupt rigid material, soft material, because that's where it breaks. Whereas you can see on the Fluke, I guess there's a little bit of strain relief kind of built into the back of the probe, but it's basically a rigid material and soft material. There's not much of a transition between the two. So anyway, guys, um, that is the 107 versus the Astro AI micro multimeter challenge. So here's the thing, guys. I myself don't have another use for an Astro AI because I've already got one. Yeah, I bought two. And I don't have use for the Fluke 107. So guys, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna offer another giveaway. This time it's going to be the 1st of August. We'll do it 1st of August, I'll do another giveaway. We're gonna give away both the Fluke 107 and the Astro AI, this guy right here, brand new in the box. All you gotta do to enter into this drawing is go ahead and comment on this video down below and I will enter you in the drawing just like we did last month. This time, uh, we're not gonna give away a Leatherman. We're gonna give away a Fluke Multimeter or Astro AI. So, guys, leave a comment down below and August 1st, we'll have a drawing. Thanks for watching this video, guys.